Now the real problem that we sit with is the calculation of the value of our closing inventory. So during the previous two years, we've always had a physical stock take, but the amount was always given to you. Now we are expecting you to go and calculate that amount yourself. So the problem that we sit with is that it's not as easy to just calculate the closing inventory value. Now by value, we mean the RAND value. So to count the actual units, that's easy. We can physically go and count one, two, three, four, five until we get to the end of the amount of units we've got. But to put a RAND value onto those units, this is where the problem comes in. Because during the financial year, different prices are paid for the goods that we've purchased. So when we get to the end of the financial year, only a portion of the inventory will now be left and this portion will not be necessarily have been purchased all at the same time or we won't even know when they were purchased. So it is thus clear that a problem now exists in respect of the value at which the inventory must be shown in the financial statements. So in other words, now that we've calculated the units, what is the exact price of those units? Are we going to take the exact price or are we going to put another value to them? These are the questions that we now ask ourselves when we work with the value of the closing inventory. So a decision must be taken as to which of the different prices paid for the inventory during the year would be shown as the cost price for the remaining inventory. And this is a choice that needs to be made and should be the one that brings with the most realistic determination of profits. Now remember, when we calculate the value of the closing inventory, this will influence in perpetual our trading stock amount and therefore would then in effect influence our um, trading stock surplus or trading stock deficit which has an effect on, growth, uh, on net profit at the end of the day. Or when we talk about periodic, this value that we are calculating now, the closing inventory, has an effect on calculating cost of sales. And if I've got a different cost of sales amount, it influences my gross profit, which in the end influences my total profit, net profit as well. So therefore, whatever I value my closing inventory as has an effect on profit. Therefore, if I go and calculate this remaining inventory value, it must be done so, so that I can have the most realistic determination of my profits okay so if we for example have inventory that was bought a long time ago but which became very scarce and is currently selling at a very highly inflated price we can show the old inventory in the financial statements at the new or higher price as well because this old inventory can now be sold at the same price as the newer inventory. So therefore when we talk about the value of our closing inventory we can decide on any one of three methods which is generally used in determining the value of the inventory on hand at the end of the financial year and we are going to learn all three of these methods and you must be able to do any three of these methods in an exercise or in a test or exam. So the three methods, very briefly, is FIFO, which stands for first in, first out method. Our second method is our weighted average method. And our third method that we've been using thus far since grade 10 is our specific identification method. So firstly, our first in, first out method. This is a very, very simple method whereby the costs are allocated on the basis that whatever goods were bought first were also sold first. 
and therefore when we go and calculate the closing inventory obviously this will then be calculated on the last inventory we've purchased so because the first goods that we've bought were sold first then what is left would have been the inventory that we bought last so therefore the closing stock is always valued at the last price that we've bought the stock for good very easy method our second method however is the weighted average method so in this method when we use this method we need to differentiate between whether we are using periodic or whether we're using perpetual inventory when we use periodic it's easier to understand the periodic inventory system when we use that and the weighted average method the weighted average price is then calculated by dividing the total cost of the items bought during the period over the number of items period um, purchased so in other words all the costs divided by all the units purchased and because we are only going to use this once a year we can use all the costs for the year divided by all the units purchased for the year so in other words the number of items in the closing inventory in other words the number of items we've counted is then simply multiplied by the weighted average which we've calculated there dividing total cost by number of units and this is then calculated as the total value for the closing inventory on the other hand if we use weighted average but we use perpetual inventory system remember perpetual says continuous we still use the same method of calculating weighted average this must just be done every single time when new inventory is purchased we will work out a new weighted average so there will be a couple of weighted averages throughout the year whereas in periodic because we only do our cost of sales calculation right at the end of the year we only need to do our weighted average once at the end of the year perpetual we do it every time new inventory is purchased so in other words this influences the cost of sales account is then debited with the new weighted average of the inventory every time inventory is sold so that's weighted average for you but weighted average calculate the same method doesn't matter periodic or perpetual taking total cost divided by total number of units our third and final is the specific identification method so in this method that is what we've used up to now where we say this is the easiest method of them all to understand where we say we keep track of every single unit um, and they normally do that by means of a barcode or by scanning it so they know exactly what that unit cost them so when they add it at the end of the year they can value it at the specific value for which we've bought it so there's no discrepancies between the books what we've bought it for that is what it's still worth to us in our books so the specific cost price of every single article that forms part of the closing stock this is provided and therefore the stock must be must then be shown at those given prices so at the actual original price that it was bought for the specific identification method now we will go and look at a couple of exercises that's going to explain and make sure that you understand the way the way that we are valuing our closing stock to 100% on top of this for any tests or exams coming up.